What's up guys, Indies Matt here coming at you with another Retro Deck Profile. Today we're going to be looking at Patrick Hoban's ARG Philadelphia Top 4 Light Sworn Rulers. Um, this event was won by Mythic Rulers and it was kind of a toss up really if you which uh, ruler variant you wanted to play at the time. Um, Mythic Rulers had uh, the advantage of things like Skill Drain but this deck had the ability to just fart out big monsters like this guy and kind of you know, just take over the game that way. This deck was ridiculously fast, and it was a lot of fun because your play lines are dependent on your mills, and it is really, really fun to play. Um, I did do the uh, second place deck profile from this event as well, Christian George's Girgia. Uh, links are in the descriptions to all the retro deck profiles. And uh, let's get right onto the list. There will also be duels and stuff in the description as well if that interests you. So we have our three Judge and Dragons. Like I said, this is the boss monster of the deck. Um, it is at three. This is one of the few times that it was at three in a meta deck back in the day. It was um, really semi-limited. Uh, we have our three Luminas uh, summon things from the graveyard and make synchro plays because we have a tuner now in Raiden. We have a tuner beat stick that can mill in the main phase nullifying the need for card trooper. Um, because we can mill two in the main phase and then mill two in the end phase, we end up um, milling more cards, but we also have access to um, synchro plays and uh, you have access to another beat stick. Uh, two Lila still, two Pop Back Row. We don't play MST, we play Lila. Uh, and then some other names. We have one Garoth to draw cards. This is really cool with Raiden because, again, you can mill in the main phase. Jane, beat stick, and then we want our one of Wolf because we do mill quite a bit in this deck. We do play the three copies of Needlebug Nest, so we have the ability to mill a lot more, but we don't really want to draw this card, especially without Solar Recharge. So that is the Lightsworn engine. Into the Ruler engine, we only play the two rulers. We play the one Blaster and the one Tempest. Um, the reason we play Tempest over uh, Tidal or Redox, uh, obviously this one is a beat stick, even though Tidal is bigger. We have the two Draco Sack, and we have the Levier in the extra deck, which wins. So we have a higher banish count to summon this, as opposed to Blaster, um, which we only have the Dragons. We don't main deck any, like, strictly fire monsters. Um, we also have the three Wyvern to search out our three Judgment Dragon. Um, whenever it's milled or sent to Graveyard, you could detach it for a rank four. Um, you could discard it for Lumina's effect. We can also search out our one Light Ray. Uh, I like Diablos in this deck. Uh, it's really fun. You can target set armors with this card, and it's really good in that regard. Um, and it makes them burn a Phoenix Chain. So if you um, if you target Phoenix Chain with this card, they obviously have to you know flip it, negate it, and then you can just bring out a ruler and then make a rank seven because it is level seven, so it has great synergy with in in that regard. So you're able to make a, a rank seven, and again, basically negating the Phoenix Chain and forcing them to burn that. So it is a good way to burn through back row decks. Um, and then we have the one Honest, because we play so many Light Monsters, light, light Swarms are obviously all light, so this is a great way to steal wins that we shouldn't be winning. Uh, three Curry Band, this is kind of our turn one play, it is a really cool card, um, be able to escape five and then just, uh, grab your spell that you need, um, and, or one of your Needle Bug Nests. And then we have the last monster, three Necro Garden, again, we could discard it off Lumina, um, we have so much milling, we can go through our deck, and we are playing exactly 40 cards. So we're going to be milling uh, quite a bit and going through our deck pretty quickly. On to the spell lineup. We have our one charge of the Light Brigade, Carpus Limited. So we uh, have our one charge to search out our Light Swarm monsters. Uh, we do get three Solar Recharge as well, so we can go through and dig through our deck. Um, discard our Light Swarms, draw two, mill two. Uh, we also have some more consistency cards in Allure of Darkness. A lot of times your Curry Bandits are dead after the first one, so the other two are just basically fodder for this. Same thing with Necro Garden. If you draw it, you don't really need it in your hand. And if you don't have a, a Lumina discard, you can uh, get rid of it off of this and get through your deck. And then one Upstar Goblin. Uh, I guess the logic behind this is 39 card deck. Uh, the card was not limited, um, but you can... The, the idea is 3 Judgment Dragons is 9,000, so if you Upstart one time... You're giving your opponent a thousand life points, but three judge and dragons is going to be game either way. Eight thousand or nine thousand, it's game either way. Um, the most 
infamous card of the format. This is the only reason decks like Sylvan's Infernity were like allowed to play this format. Um, we have our three Soul Charge. Uh, this card can be difficult to figure out how to resolve um, when you're, especially late game, when you have a bunch of options, you're trying to figure out what to do. Um, this card is a great way to steal games, and the extra deck is kind of based around having three Soul Charge. So that's the reason, like, you play a card like Scrap Dragon instead of a thing like Stardust, because you don't have a battle phase. You have to find ways to simplify the game state and um, kind of clear your opponent's board without being able to attack. So you have a lot of cards in the extra deck that do that. And, of course, you have things like Lumina and Lila, Lumina to, you know, make things like Arcanite, and then Lila to pop background and things like that. So you have ways to simplify the game state that way. Uh, the other last two spells are just uh, Foolish Burial to have things hit our graveyard. And then the One Book of Moon. Um, I like this card because it can't be wiretapped, and a lot of decks were main decking wiretap. So you want that to be as dead against as many things as possible. So you have your uh, your three Needle Bug Nest. Uh, Book of Moon is also a great way to um, get your Judgment Dragon to resolve if they attempt to do something to the effect, like if they uh, Prime Valor, Breakthrough Skill, um, Phoenix Chain, things like that. You could just Book of Moon it, and then the effect will resolve and blow the whole board. Um... Needle Bug Nest, mill five cards. Uh, it's a really cool card. It's deserving of a hollow print. This is Mwabaku. You should get a hollow print at some point in this game's long history. But it is the only trap in the entire deck. Now we will get on to the extra deck. Uh, we only play four Synchro Monsters. Three of them are being sevens. One Black Rose, for obvious reasons. A lot of time, you're basically going to go Lumina, Raiden, Mill 2, uh, Black Rose. This becomes a dragon, so you could banish it and something else for a ruler and then you could drop your judgment dragons and things like that and just go for game so this you clear the board with this and then you go for game um one michael it's another name again it's another way to clear cards um if under soul charge same thing with arcanite Mag uh, arcanite magician oh no a way to clear cards when you don't want to because if you soul charge and if you black rose you're losing everything that you brought back off the soul charge which is something you obviously don't want to do because you're soul charging so these two cards are great ways to pick off cards um when you don't want to clear everything and michael obviously is also another name and then the aforementioned scrap dragon as the one eight to again clear cards when you've soul charged for the extra deck, or exceeds part, we have one Levier, uh, because we banish off of summoning dragons and things like that. Uh, it's also a great way to get your bottom list um, Light Swarm monsters back, things like that. Um, equipped, uh, interesting to see that he played this over Zen mains, uh, but they do kind of have uh, similar applications. Uh, again, Alucard, clear cards under Soul Charge, uh, clear back row to free up your Judgment Dragon and your rulers if you want to go for a big ruler play, you want to go for a big Judgment Dragon play, you can make sure they have one less uh, out to to that. For fours, uh, Honor Arc, again, a, a way to get monsters without battle phase. Wild Wild Chain, this card is really important because you want to be able to dump your Dragon Rulers or your Wyverns or things like that because if you have, you only have two rulers so you want to make sure that you get to them there are a lot of times that they'll be at the bottom of your deck where you need to get to one of them quickly so this is probably the best way to do that uh again dire wolf a way to be proactive on under soul charge uh rhapsody to banish cards from your opponent's graveyard this card is insane in the mythic ruler matchup and then the mirror matchup as well uh one Paula Dynamo because all the light swarm monsters are light so you can make this with those. And then we have the rank 7s. We have two Draco Sacks. Again, they are both wind. They are a way to set up protection and pop cards under Soul Charge. So the fact that you can detach one from it, get two tokens, and then use one of the tokens to pop a card, and you still have the protection um, from that token so that you can Judgment Dragon still. So if you want to blow up a back row with this to make sure that your Judgment Dragon can resolve... Uh, it was more likely to resolve. You can blow up uh, one, car one uh, back row, and then if they have a bunch of monsters, you can drop your Judgment Dragon with one less back row, so it's more likely to resolve. And then the last card is one big eye. Um, be sure to let me know what you guys think of this deck. Um, again, duels in the description. Um, we're going to kind of be playing a lot of April 2014. This is a really fun and diverse format because it reminds me a lot of like September 2011 where there are... like. September 2011 is considered plant format, but there are a ton of decks around plants. This is called hat format, but there are a ton of decks other than hat that you can play. 
Um, so we have like Gyrgya, Mythic Ruler, Lightsworn Ruler, Sylvans, things like that. So there are a lot of different decks that you can play in this format. Be sure to like and subscribe for more retro format content. And thanks for watching, guys.